Hi Bobcats! In this video, we're going to work several examples of determining what is the dominant intermolecular force in a sample. This is the type of thing that I expect you to be able to do with intermolecular forces on a quiz or a test. So our objectives are to develop a process for determining this dominant intermolecular force and then to practice this with several examples. The process of identifying the dominant or strongest intermolecular force can be shown by this flowchart. The idea behind the flowchart is that since we're looking for the strongest one, let's first see if the, the strongest possible one, which is hydrogen bonding, is present. If it's not, then we'll look for the next strongest, which is dipole-dipole. And then if that one's not present by default, uh, we have double ended dispersion forces because they're present in all molecules. So the way we check for hydrogen bonding is with this first question. Are there hydrogen atoms attached to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine in the molecule? If the answer is yes, then hydrogen bonding is our dominant intermolecular force. If the answer is no, then the next thing that we check for is dipole-dipole. And so the big question to answer there is, is this a polar molecule? If it is a polar molecule, then the strongest intermolecular force is dipole-dipole. If neither one of those forces are present, then by default, we're left with London dispersion forces because any molecule that has electrons has London dispersion forces. So the first example problem that I want to work is ethanol, which is the active ingredient in hand sanitizer. And what I'd like to check for is, first of all, does it have that strongest intermolecular force, which is hydrogen bonding? So by our flow chart from the previous slide, the question we need to ask is, does this molecule contain a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine bonded to a hydrogen atom? And the answer is yes. Yes, it does. So the fact that it has an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen tells us that the dominant intermolecular force for this particular molecule will be hydrogen bonding. Now, in order to determine this, we only needed to look at a single molecule and its structure. But always keep in mind, when we're talking about intermolecular forces, we're really talking about how this molecule interacts with another molecule. So that slightly negative oxygen on one molecule will interact with the slightly positive hydrogen on a nearby molecule. In our next example, ammonia, we need to once again start with the strongest one, which is hydrogen bonding, and ask ourselves, does this molecule contain a hydrogen atom that's bonded to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine? And the answer is yes. We have that grouping right here. Actually, all three of the bonds are that. And so the dominant intermolecular force in this molecule is hydrogen bonding as well. Chloromethane is our next example. This is a methane that has had one of the hydrogens substituted with a chlorine atom. So the first thing we need to check for is hydrogen bonding. And does this molecule have a hydrogen that's attached to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine? Well, no, it does not. All of the hydrogens are attached to a carbon. So we do not have hydrogen bonding. So the next thing we do is we check to see, is this a polar molecule? To be polar, as was reviewed in the previous video, we need to look at the central carbon atom in this molecule, or whatever the central atom is, and then look at all of the electron domains on it. In this case, they are all single bonds, but the single bonds are not identical. Three of them are to hydrogens, and one of them is to chlorine. This lack of symmetry means that this will be a polar molecule because those electron domains on the central atom are not absolutely identical. So since this is a polar molecule, the dominant intermolecular force is going to be dipole-dipole. I like to do this clicker question at this point uh, to make sure that you don't fall for a common oops. Um, here we are given four molecules, CH3OH, H2, HF, and water, and are asked which ones of these molecules are capable of forming hydrogen bonds. 
Well, when we have that molecule CH3OH, it's written out here as a structural formula to show us that the hydrogen is attached to the oxygen, which means that this one can do hydrogen bonding. Um, with H2, well, that's going to be a hydrogen bonded to a hydrogen. So can this one do hydrogen bonding? I mean, that's all about hydrogen. Well, no, it can't do hydrogen bonding because it has to have a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine that's attached to a hydrogen. So this H2 molecule is not capable of doing hydrogen bonding. Um, the next example is HF. So we have a hydrogen bonded to a fluorine atom. And um, to be able to do hydrogen bonding, the hydrogen must be attached to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So yes, this one is capable of doing it. Before I forget, let me just go ahead and put check marks up here on the ones that could. And then last but not least, we have water. And in water, we have a hydrogen bonded to an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen. And so since we have hydrogen attached to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, this one is capable of doing hydrogen bonding. And so the best answer to this question is B. Our objectives were to figure out a process for identifying the dominant intermolecular force in the sample and then to practice it with several examples. And I'm realizing now we never did one um, whose dominant intermolecular force was London dispersion. So I'm going to just throw one on here. Um, as an example of that, we could have methane, CH4. And I'll sketch its Lewis structure here. Um, the central carbon atom, well, let's see. Let's start with the, the strongest one, um, hydrogen bonding. This molecule can't do it because we do not have any nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine present. Next up, we want to determine, is this a polar molecule? So when we look at that central carbon atom, it actually has four identical domains, which make this molecule nonpolar. And so it's not dipole-dipole. That just leaves, by calculatus eliminatus, London dispersion forces, because London dispersion forces are present in all molecules.